Hey guys, welcome back, Orbaum here, bringing you what you guys might remember to be the do's and don'ts, but now we're changing the name, making it a little bit nice, nicer sounding. Uh, shout outs to my, um, shout outs to my viewers, people on the Discord for giving me the suggestion to changing the name. Uh, but today we're changing the name to Buy or Bulk. So we're doing a Buy or Bulk Crimson Invasion edition. Uh, Crimson Invasion pre-release has started that last weekend. I think we have two weeks, less than two weeks before the set actually comes out. So I figured now is the time before you know it gets too late. I didn't really get a set analysis out there because I mean six haven't had a time to get together. But I mean, if you guys don't know, Fire Bulk is where I am going to be loosely going over the set, very loosely going over the set. So not every card, just cards that I feel like are relevant or are close to relevant, but not actually relevant. I'll tell you guys what is worth buying and what is honestly just worth skipping out on, bulking up, uh, good for the next set, you know, sending that bulk for the next set, all that good stuff. And yeah, and also this is a discussion video. I'm gonna ask you guys questions about what you guys think of other cards and uh, maybe Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe you guys think the card has a lot more potential than I am Or maybe um, <clears throat> I'm giving a card too much potential one way or another Let me know if I think if I think I put anything in bulk that doesn't deserve to be in bulk I am gonna be talking strictly towards the metagame right now and the metagame that's potentially going to be coming up uh, a good example is uh, Alone Golem GX, which I'll go over when I get there. But Alone Golem GX is a good card, but in our current meta where de-evolution is strong and spread damage is strong and you're damaging yourself, I don't think it's that good as a meta deck, but it's really good. Like, it's a really fun deck in theory, right? We'll go over that when we get there. So, <clears throat> first things first, we have this new Beedrill. Uh, it is going to be a little bit hard. Let me see if I can actually make... The screen capture a little bit smaller. There's gonna be some live editing here, guys, boys and girls. Uh, see if I can do this. Right, it's gonna be a little bit weird. Yeah, OBS is kind of weird when it comes to this stuff. So I don't want to stretch out the cards, right? But I want to make sure you guys can see the whole card when I do this. Uh, you know, it's better than nothing, I suppose. <laughs> but we have a Beedrill card here. Beedrill's pretty decent. I mean. One energy attacks are never that bad, but I don't think I think this is definitely a card worth bulking. Sudden Strike does 10 damage. If this Pokemon evolved from Kakuna during this turn, your Pokemon active Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned. So that's cool. I mean, Choice Band is 40 damage. You paralyze them, you poison them. If they can't switch out, that's 60 damage. You devolve them if it's like a Ralts or a Matang that they use Red Candy to evolve, and that's a knockout. Then you have Shark and Needle for 60 damage. I mean, 120 HP is a really bad HP number because of Glissopod. <laughs> And like the main reason because of Glissapod being a thing. If it was 130 HP, this would be a lot better, but it's 120 HP. Uh, although it is worth mentioning Kakuna. Kakuna is a really interesting attack. Search your deck for up to three Kakunas, put them onto your bench. It's literally Frogadier's attack, water duplicates, but it's a Kakuna. Uh, you'd have to devolve a lot, which is not great if you want to use Sudden Stab consecutively. I mean, to be fair, it does have free retreat, which is nice. I think it's a good little fun meme deck, but with the addition of Guzma and Acerola and... People are playing healing nowadays, so <clears throat> I think this card is worth bulking. We have Execute. I mean, Hypnosis is cool. I mean, we're going to go over Lone and Executor later, but I mean, this is the only Execute we have. It's not 40 HP, it's 50 HP. Uh, so whatever. Moving on. Uh, we have a Cacturn in here. Fine, suppose it's not damage. going to take 60 more damage. So you can do 90 damage for one energy. But one thing, and that low HP number is just not good. And it has a two retreat cost. Um... Hunts, which one of your opponents mentioned one with their active Pokemon attack to support damage to that new active Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this card. Bulk it up. We do have a Care Blast, which is apparently really cool because it's ability. It's a very unique ability. Once during your turn, you may discard a Shellmet from your hand, which is this baby that no one's ever going to play. Uh, if you do, search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this Pokemon. So you can essentially evolve into Excel Gore on the first turn by discarding a Shellmet. So it's very Yu-Gi-Oh-esque, but you'll see later how the Excel, the, the uh, not Excel Gore, the... Uh, What's it called? Um, I forget the Pokemon's name. Excelgor and Excavalier. Yeah, Excavalier. Uh, it's not. It's not the best. Uh, recovery discard a card. Discard an energy. This blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, nobody cares. Discard an energy to heal. It's 90 HP. It's not great. Moving on. We do have a Go Goat. Go Goat is pretty interesting. Uh, 120 HP. Which once again, that 120 HP number is just not good in our current meta. <clears throat> But its attacks are pretty interesting, right? Uh, its ability is Sap Trigger. This attack does 80 more damage to your opponent's Grass Pokemon. So, I mean, you're doing 80, right? So you're hitting for 160, 190 with a Choice Band, 210 with Kukui. Uh, it's good against Glisspod. I mean, it's really good against uh, 
top of Bulu, but it's a grass DCE for 120 HP Pokemon that relies on its ability to actually do damage to grass type Pokemon. Not feeling it, man. Not feeling it. There's better grass types to play, like Bulu, like Lispod. So we're going to skip out on that one. We have Alolan Marowak G... Um, oh, not GX. I, we wish it was a GX. 100 HP Alolan Pokemon. The Alolan Marowak we've all been waiting for. It's not a GX though, sadly. But it does have a really cool free attack with Dance of Flames. For each energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon, attach a, rain, uh, a rainbow. Attach a fire energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon any way you like. So if you have a bunch of energy attached to... Uh, if your opponents have a bunch of energy, you can actually use this attack to load up your own energy. Uh, it's interesting. If, if fire, let me, let me put it like this, right? Right now it's kind of both, but I would recommend getting a 2-2 line of Cubone Marowak because right now we have Turnator, right? Turnator is, Turnator is like the only valid GX attack that we have in fire type decks right now. You can argue there is, you know, Entei, but Entei is not worth playing in fire type decks right now. Um, so since we already have Turnator, that guarantees us five, which in our, which there's very few decks that really stack up energies on the field. Like we have... Drampa Garb, which doesn't, it's only like three energies, um, maybe four, maybe five if you're lucky. Um, Guardi has the one that stocks up a lot. So that could be nice for the Guardi matchup, but you already have Tornado. Five, five energies is usually more than enough between Max Lictors and Manual Tetran and Baby Volcanion. Uh, <clears throat> you have Glitzpot, which only us usually has three energies on the field at a time, and you already beat Glitzpot because of, of weakness, so... I don't think this card's actually worth playing right now. Maybe if Fire gets a really, really powerful GX attack, that makes you not want to use Turtonator GX anymore. You could potentially replace the Turtonators with this and just play Ho-Ohs in their place. Uh, that is an option, although I'm not too sure how I feel about it. It also has Burning, Burmering, 70 damage, flip 2 coins, to 70 damage for each head. If either of them is heads, your opponent active Pokemon is now burned. So it is a guaranteed 90 damage, but it's a fire, fire, colorless attack. It's very expensive. And once again, the HP number is just not ideal. Baby Volcanion has 130 HP, which is what makes it so nice in Volcanion decks on top of its accelerating attack. This one, uh, you know what I mean? So we're going to move on. We do have Camera Up and Numal. Continuous head buff up a coin until you can tail stack is 80 damage. All right, so flip teeny fun time. One heads is 110 damage. We out here. <laughs> Moving on. Bulk it up. We got a new Staryu, but it doesn't have free retreat. So it's whatever. And spinning attack is whatever. Moving on. Starmie. Once during your turn, you may shuffle this Pokemon. All cards attached to it into your deck. Why would you want to do that? Moving on. Magikarp. Now, this Magikarp's cool for the Gyarados, which we will talk about. Magi this is probably one of the best Magikarps we have. All Magikarps, as far as I know, have 30 HP. So, we have the ability to submerge here. As long as, your po as, long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage onto this Pokemon by attacks, both yours and your by attacks, both yours and your opponents. So, it doesn't stop you from being sniped by Decidueye, but it does stop you from being sniped by Tapu Koko. You can prevent yourself from having to play cards like Magikarp. Uh, it's really, re it's the new Magikarp for that expanded Gyarados decklist from Primal Clash, which is really, really nice. I think it's Primal Clash. So that's really nice. Uh, <clears throat> Decidueye is still an auto loss, but now you don't have to worry about, uh, what's it called? Now you don't have to worry about Tapu Koko promo anymore, which is nice. And then Waterfall Evolution. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this uh, onto this Pokemon uh, to evolve it, then shuffle your deck. So I guess you can kind of play this Gyarados deck with like Max Luxuries, Aqua Patches, and DCEs. That's asking a lot, but it is possible, right? Because you could potentially do this in the first turn. With a one or a treat, it's not too hard to set up a Magikarp on the bench retreat and then go into the Magikarp and then attack become a Gyarados which will give you a monstrous 240 HP so I mean it's the best Magikarp we have right now so definitely get yourself a play set of these because we might eventually get four we might eventually get a Gyarados is super duper worth playing and until they print a better Magikarp than this, this is, the, this is as good as we're gonna have so I would recommend get yourself a play set of those Gyarados GX on the other hand as cool of a Pokemon as it is it's not gonna be super meta defining Having 240 HP with a, uh, <laughs> what was it, the muscle dumbbells gives you 270 HP. Now that's insane. That is, I think, the highest HP we have in any Pokemon ever, uh, potential. So that's really, really cool. We have, and like combine that, like that might be a fun stall deck. You combine that with cards like uh, Rough Seas and maybe the Manaphys, the new Manaphys and Shining Legends. So you can constantly heal up and you just deck out your opponent. That is a cool deck idea. I might have to try that out some, at some point. We'll see. But overall, the card is, eh. 70 damage for a water colorless color. So it's pretty decent. I mean, it's not awful, right? You're doing 100 damage with Choice Band, uh, three energies. It's just not the best because it's three energies. And when the, when the best deck in the format is Guardi, <laughs> having that many energies on a Pokemon is not the best. Even though they need eight energies between the two of them to get a knockout. If you have three energies and they have 
uh, what was it, four and a choice band, which is really, really, really easy for Gardevoir to do. If you've ever played a Gardevoir decklist, you know how easy it is for Gardevoir to just pop a TCE, manual attachment, and then, uh, or like pop a DC on there, and then two secret springs in one turn, attach a choice band, boom, bam, you're dead. So, uh, uh, you know, heavy energy attacking uh, cost that doesn't guarantee a knockout is pretty rough. Now, Draconic Disaster, 100 damage, and if there's a stadium card in play, it attacks 100 more damage. 200 damage. With well, a choice band is 230, which does knock out Guardies, but it doesn't knock out things like Metagross and stuff. Although you're not really terribly worried about Metagross because you do tank one hit. Um, and you know what I mean? It's still, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Doing 200 damage, which would cost you, like, I know you can play DCs, right? So you'd have to play two Aqua Patches, a DCE, and yeah, we would need to play like three Aqua Patches and a DC to charge this up in one turn. Or, you know, have like a couple turns to charge up, but then you're only charging up one Gyarados at a time, and you generally want to have more than one attacker on the field charged up and ready to go, especially in circumstances like this. And you get blown away by top of Coco GX attack, and with Raichu picking up Steam, we're going to get Zerkatry GX's promos. Uh, I mean, there's, eh, you know what I mean? And we're, you're weak to Zerkatry. <laughs> Zerkatry is going to be pretty popular in Electric deck, so I think Gyarados is definitely bulk. I, don't, I mean, you could play the deck once or twice just to have fun, but. As of right now, I'm not seeing how how useful Gyarados is going to be. I mean, to be fair, if you play Kikui, you do hit 250, which will knock out everything except for, you know, dumbbells on Gyarados. Let me know what you guys think about Gyarados. I am in the camp that, like, it's, it's definitely fun. I feel like it's going to be really, like, when it works, it's going to work out really well. But then I feel like it's only going to work, like, 60% of the time, which is pretty low compared to, like, other decks like Gardevoir, Galispod that work like 90% of the time, you know what I mean? And you know, when your matchup is bad against Guardi, you already have not a great deck. Although we are getting that new Sogaleo, that new Sogaleo doesn't come out for like four months, and this is gonna have a hard time against that new Sogaleo too, because you're forced to play Kakui. I'm, I'm, I'm like talking about Gyarados too much. <clears throat> We're gonna move on. We have a new Mamoswine card. Uh, Mamoswine is whatever, you know, 180 HP, which is pretty nice for a stage two non-GXDX. Uh, forceful Tackle, you make, not, you, you may out up to nine counters on this Pokemon. It's tech. There's ten more damage for each damage counter you place this way. Oh, okay. You may okay. You may put up to ten nine damage counters. You can essentially half kill yourself to do 180 damage, right? No. Yeah. So it'd be 180 damage. And to be fair, it's pretty easy to pretty easy to charge up, and you can control the damage output. So there's a lot of good things going on with this. You play this with a you play this with a Manaphy with the Manaphy from Shining Legends, and you just heal a couple damage here and there so that you can continuously attack and knock out with the right numbers. With Choice Band, you can hit 210. So overall, I mean, the card's cool, but it's a stage two, right? And the previous evolutions are nothing great. Like, there's no really cool attacks here. Um, But overall, it's not a terrible card. I, I still say bulk. I don't think it's worth playing a deck of it, but you know, it's it's cool, right? Flip two coins, attack the three more damage for each head. I'm definitely gonna build a deck with this on the channel just for fun. We have a new Remoraid. That's pretty cool. Uh, is it better than the other ones? No, it's not. So we're going to move on. Uh, we have Octillery though. Octillery has... This is a new Octillery, so if you do play Octillery for draw support, it is something to consider. Ink Spit, if the Fink Pokemon tries to attack during your opponent's next turn, your opponent flips a coin of Tails attack does nothing. Whatever, I guess. It's not a big deal. I'd rather play Paralysis. Um, special uh, special Artillery. 40 damage, you may discard special energy from this Pokemon if you do attack this 80 more damage. So you can do 120 damage uh, by discarding, like, I don't know, a counter... Counter energy, whatever. It's not that great. Moving on. Corefish and Crawdont, uh, double claws, 80 damage. Discard two energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Now that is dope, bro. That is disruption to the next level. It is a lot of energy, but it is a water Pokemon, so you already have to think Aqua Patch. That's super cool though. Discarding two energy from the from the active Pokemon, bruh. Imagine a deck where you kind of like are chipping down at your opponent and then like once they set up you can come in and double claw them Like there's no flips or anything. That's actually super duper cool I feel like this is something worth hanging on to maybe a 2-2 line or a 4-4 line Because there might become a time where like Like turbo disruption might become the like water turbo disruption might be a thing I don't know. That's something that's something to look into. I feel like this is a maybe not a buy but I wouldn't bulk it up. I would hold on to it for a little bit just to see what comes out in the future because that's a lot of potential in one card. Discard two energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. That's a lot of potential. We got Feebas here, another 30 HP Pokemon. I guess that's Splashing Dodge, which can prevent damage on this Pokemon. 
which is good. It's better than paralysis, right? Because your paralysis, your opponent can Guzma. But if you're like preventing damage, then uh, they have to get rid of you. They have to make they have to Guzma you out to uh, stop your effect from happening. We have Milotic here. I heard a lot of good things from Milotic. I don't remember what it does. So 120 HP and a week to grass. So I mean, whatever. Your grass matchup is pretty bad already, so it doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. TLC, Tender Love and Care. Shuffle one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it to, into their deck. So shuffle one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it to their deck. That's really powerful. What? That's so strong. Imagine this with like Decidueye. Like you just put damage counters on on like imagine like having three decidueyes, right? You put one damage counter on the bench you want to shuffle back in. You put a bunch of damage counters onto the active that you're going to knock out with time, and you just you just shuffle it back into their deck. What if you like Guzma? Oh my, this is dope. This card is dope. An ocean cyclone attack does ten damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I don't care about that. This is card is dope. Play this and spread, bro. It's a one water energy, so you are forced to play rainbow. And Decidueye, I don't see any problems with this since you're most likely playing rainbow already. There's a lot of Decidueye builds that do play rainbow. This could be super interesting. It is another stage two in in uh, Decidueye though, and usually they don't have room for this card, but this is there's definitely potential in this card. Get yourself four of these. Get yourself a place out of these. Or uh, maybe like a two, two line, because you're probably not gonna be playing a place in a deck, but it is super interesting. I'm a fan of these. Here come the Reggies. I'm not too sure how I feel about the Reggies. This one is 130 HP, which is already really good. So the damage is not bad. If you if you if you have a Red Dragon play, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage into this Pokemon by your opponent's stage two attacks. I'm actually gonna switch up the music now. <clears throat> there we go. I know people like to like it when I switch up the music, so my bad for having that music play for so long. Also, I need to make this video shorter. Um if Red Dragon, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage on this Pokemon by your opponent's stage two Pokemon. Already don't like it because Tapu Lele. Moving on. <laughs> like it's a cool effect if you know Tabu Lele was in the thing. We got Shellos. I guess Gastrodon is a ground type in this game. Pikachu. This is not a 70 HP Pikachu, so we're gonna move on. Alolan Raichu. If there's any stadium cards in play, this Pokemon has no retreat cost. Uh, that's interesting. What's this attack do? This attack does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Oh, so it's another psychic attack. Eh, it's not worth it. I wish I had a better ability, but like an ability that actually affects your support state. So here is the Alo. Now here's one of my favorite cards in the set, but I will tell you right now, it's definitely not a buy. <laughs> we got Alolan Geodude, flip a coin to head prevent damage. That's nice. Um, Alolan Graveler, self-destruct, knocks itself out, but he can do 100 damage. Dude, look at the artwork on this thing. Bruh, that's a sick looking card, dude. Dude, why why did they make Surfer Dude G uh, Surfer Dude Graveler, who looks like a Surfer Dude, let's be real. Like he's out here looking, <laughs> he's out here looking like a menace, like a menace. I'm gonna nick I'm gonna nickname my deck Dennis. <laughs> we got Alolan Golem GX. I'm a huge fan of this card. <clears throat> it is something worth trying if you really want to play it. It has a four retreat cost, so it's heavy ball searchable, which is another thing worth mentioning that Graveler or Golem or Graveler over here is also heavy ball searchable. So that's some pretty interesting. But we have 250 HP, another 250 HP stage two Pokemon with three interesting attacks, and by three I mean two. We got Hammer and Lightning double colors for 80 damage. Doing 110 with a choice band is never bad. I like that. I'm a huge fan of that. But I'm all I'm all up into the guts of Super Electromagnetic Tackle, bro. I love this card so much. 200 damage does 50 damage to itself. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, the reason why I don't think this card is a buy is because um, you're doing 50 damage to yourself. And if I remember correctly, your Geodude only has 60 HP. So if they do any sort of bench damage to you, anything at all, they can devolve you after you use your big attack. But 200 damage with a choice band is 230, with Kikui is 250, that knocks out all Pokemon, and you are super effective on Gyarados, so even Gyarados does get knocked out. So, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, but you're doing 50 damage to yourself. If you weren't doing 50 damage to yourself, and say that you were like, discarding energy, I'd, be, I'd rather discard energy than do damage to myself. But because, of how easy it is to set up a lone golem GX in one turn. This is where I like the card a lot. This is a lightning card, all right? And we're gonna go over counter catcher, which is really, really cool. If you have um, if you have less prize, if you have more prizes left than your opponent, you can Lysand or anything up as an item, which is really nice. But doing 200 damage with a DCE and a double lightning energy cost, check it, right? 
You just have this alone goal. You don't attach any energies throughout the game. Maybe you attach to the bench so it doesn't get knocked out. So like other your other Pokemon so they don't get knocked out. That's cool and all. Uh, you have Tapu Koko promo that can put spread damage on the board while you set up your golems in the back. Now check it. Golem's attack cost is super dope. You just attach a DC DCE to it. You use the electrode that, that, that puts two energies by knocking itself out onto the golem, right? You switch your Tapu Koko promo out for free. You play the counter catcher. You bring out any Pokemon you want and you can either super magnetic tackle with probably a choice choice band to get a knockout on a Gardevoir. Um, you haven't played Kakui yet, I'm assuming. So play Kakui, knock out a Metagross. You can knock uh, with, cho with choice band. You do knock out cards like Galispod. You knock out Drampo without choice band. You knock out so many things. You do damage to yourself, which sucks. But once again, it took you one turn to fully set up a Alolan Golem with ease. Might I mention, you just have to draw the right cards, which uh, obviously that's not the easiest thing to do, but when you're attacking with Coco promo while you're setting up in the back and you're just never putting energies on your lone golems and you're waiting for the right time to do it, there's benefits to that. Or you can knock out maybe a Curlia or a Metang or something with its amazingly broken GX attack, Heavy Rock GX. Your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during their next turn. Ridiculous. They literally just can't play next turn. They just have to attack and pass. That's it. They can't. Sycamore and attach energy, rare candy. <clears throat> All they can do is use the abilities on their field so they can Oranguru. But it's hard for them to Orangu when they can't play down cards to uh, empty the hand. Uh, they can trade, which is cool, I guess. But, like, they can't play the cards that they traded for. Uh, they can't Rare Candy to Evolve. Uh, you are in a really good position after you use Heavy Rock GX. You literally get a free turn, which is money. Which is money. I love that. Alone Golem GX, as cool as it is, though, once again, 250 HP. You're doing damage to yourself and... Uh, the following turn, you probably are going to be revenged because to hit 200 with a Fighting Week Pokemon and with cards like Buswell coming out, it's a little bit easy. It's really, really easy. So I don't think it's going to be a meta card, but it is something I'm going to personally get because I love the card. I think it's dope. Uh, moving on, though. Amoga, put three basic energy cards from discard pile to your hand. That's actually really nice. That's, like, super nice, actually. <clears throat> Maybe this is worth getting. It's have a, it does have a retreat cost, but I mean, it's a colorless attack. You are going to retreat with that attack anyways. And you have Bolt Switch, which is cool. Uh, putting energy cards from your discard to your hand right away as an attack could be really useful in a lot of different decks. Uh, mainly like cards like Decidueye, where you want to get those very few energies that you play back into your hand. Uh, if you're playing like a Magnezone variant kind of deck and you don't want to attack that turn, you can just energy catch to put the energies back into your hand to use later. That's a benefit to it. Maybe this is worth having a one of or a two of. I wouldn't bulk that up unless you have a lot. You do have a new Gengar, and this Gengar is pretty interesting. 130 HP with Gnawing, uh, Gnawing Curse. Whenever your opponent attaches an energy card from their hand to one of their Pokemon, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So once again, another way to put damage on the board where you need to. What's really interesting about it is that you have the other Gengar. Um, that Gengar has, what's it called? It knocks out Pokemon that have three damage counters on them. So any Pokemon, if your active Pokemon has three, if your opponent's active Pokemon has three damage counters on it, it gets knocked out by Gengar. Now the bad thing about it is that it's a Gengar, stage two, low HP, and a pretty decent attack cost. But it does pair well with it, I suppose. It doesn't hurt playing this with it, just because you can let them damage themselves. And you can play your Tapu Koko promo, spread damage, de evolve if you need to, and then get some free knockouts where you need to with the other Gengar. Uh, overall, though, I think that Gengar is bad. I think this Gengar is cool in the deck, but overall the deck is still pretty bad. So I'd say bulk it up. Moving on. Now we got Miss Mag. Miss Mag is, has Chaos Wheel and a Stage 1 Pokemon as a 1 energy attack, which is not bad at all. 30 damage, your opponent can't play any tool cards, special energy cards, or stadiums from their hand. So that actually messes up a lot of decks, especially decks like Decidueye that only play special energies. Sometimes you can't make them play Choice Man. It's a 1 energy attack with a 1 retreat cost as well. So overall, this card is definitely worth hanging on to. I feel like a 2 2 line is good to have in your binder because it's a very good attack to be like, it's really, really good in disruption too. So if you're playing like a very heavy disruption deck. It's another card worth mentioning, so I would hold on to that. We got Grumpig here, own tempo. The Pokemon cannot be confused. It's very, very happy. Uh, during your next turn, the Pokemon attack is 60 more damage. So overall, very happy. Too bad you suck, bro. Moving on, 120 HP. I already don't like it. Bell of Silence. Your Pokemon can't. If your opponent can't play any Pokemon that has an ability from their hand during their next turn. Okay, that's cool. I guess you can stop them from evolving into Gardevoir. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist. Uh, before you before doing damage, you can be discarding a number of Pokemon tool cards attached from your Pokemon. Detect this four damage for each card you discard in this way. Eh, 
I mean, do you really want to discard tools with no tool retrieval in the format? Moving on. <clears throat> well, we have a new Salazzle, and I think I remember really liking the Salazzle card. It's a poison type Salazzle, which is nice, so you can add that to any decks that play Salazzle already. It has Nasty Plot. Oh, you can't because it plays Psychic Energy. Never mind. But, anyways, we have Nasty Plot. Search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand. That's pretty nice. It's no Talonflame, but it's pretty nice. It's one energy attack that can get you search. And then you have severe poison. Your opponent active Pokemon is not poison. Pull four damage counters instead of one on that Pokemon between turns. Between severe poison and the Survipers, you can do what at most 80 damage between turns on a one energy attacking Pokemon that has 110 HP. It's not the worst thing ever. You do lose to any deck that plays Acerola and Guzmas like Glisspod and Glisspod already Okos you. So overall, I don't think the deck is very meta-defining. 80 damage is also just not enough. And it's your attack for the turn, so... Mm. And expanded, what are you doing? 140? Because of the plus 20. Is it plus 20? So you're doing 130 with that, and it's still not worth it. So uh, I think the card's cool. If you really want it, if you like the idea, then I'd grab some. But if you don't, if you like me and I'm just like, meh, I want to worry about it. Oranguru. Looking amazing. Uh, put three Pokemon tool cards from your disco pile into your hand. That's kind of cool. Fixer of the Forest. Uh, I don't think it's super necessary because most people just max out their, their tool line instead of playing a Ranguru, but it's pretty cool, I guess. Moving on, though, I think it's pretty bulk. I think it's bulk-tastic. Nihiligo, 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 Nihiligo. Uh, we got Nihiligo here. Uh, Nihiligo. Is it Nihiligo or Nihilego? I think either way is right. Nihi, and then the word Lego, or Nihiligo. So it's either... Nihiligo, Nihilego, Nihi. So Li or Le? That's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's Le, Nihile. Because if it was Li, it'd be two L's, right? Or two E's. Nihilego, Nihile. I'm going to say Nihilego. Let me know if I'm wrong. I'm actually super interested in that. Empty Light. When you play this Pokemon uh, card from your hand to your bench during your turn, you may leave both active Pokemon confused and poisoned. It's an interesting ability. The main reason why is because of Dark Ride GX. You have that dead end GX attack that can. Um, Oko a Pokemon, like no matter what the Pokemon is, as an attack, as long as they have a status condition. So there's that benefit, and being confused and poisoned does not stop you from being able to retreat, so there's that benefit as well. Uh, when you play the Stadium card, you have free retreat. So overall, the card's interesting. I think Empty Light is really, really cool in that specific deck, but overall, eh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> if you really want to force your opponent to switch, they can just play Guzma or something like that. So that's why I don't like status in this current meta. Because uh, there's so many times, like, I've been playing a lot of Raichu lately, uh, just to finish this Electric Challenge, because I'm not the biggest fan of playing uh, Raichu, but, like, I had to finish the Electric Challenge, and people like the new cards, right? And, uh, every time I go for Voltail, my opponent has an out. So every time, every time I paralyze my opponent, my opponent does have an out. And having an out nowadays, where people are really maxing out on their Guzma counts, is not rare. So... I'm not the biggest fan of status in this in this in this format, but if you do play Dark and if you are a fan of Dark Dark Ride GX and you want to play Dark Ride in the meta, that is something to go for. Its other attacks are pretty interesting though. 120 damage for three Psychic is not the best. It is a basic, so you can max Luxor into it, but it's still not the best. Uh, they can't retreat during your next turn, which once again, Guzma. You know what I mean? I guess with the poison, that's 130. It's still not great, but Symbiont, Symbiont, Sim, Symbiont, Symbiont. Is it Symbiont? Symbiont. Symbiont, I, I just think Symbiote, like, but like, I don't, I don't know what the end, but regardless, Symbiont GX, the, the, you can add the top two cards of your opponent's deck to their prize cards, so, your opponent doesn't know what the prizes are, unless they look through the deck again like a good player would, uh, and <laughs> you're forcing another two prizes, in my opinion, this is probably the most broken GX attack ever, but it is a three energy attack cost, you're put you're, you're putting three energies on a Pokemon you're probably not going to be attacking with, since Lockup is not a great attack, it's definitely worth getting one or two. 100%, I do agree that it's definitely worth getting one or two because maybe a psychic type Pokemon will become broken in the future uh, in standard and expanded, they are broken. But in standard, it might be worth uh, hanging on to because we get psychic type acceleration. Some buy on GX is stupid broken. Like, <laughs> you were playing an eight prize card game, bruh. An eight prize card game. That's ridiculous. Your opponent has to knock out four GXs. They have to knock out eight Pokemon to win the game. How is that fair? I don't know. Don't ask me. Moving on, though. I think Xerxes is a lot, is really good, too. Because you can take a card from their hand and put it onto their bench, uh, put it onto their prizes, 
which is really good because you can essentially empty your opponent's hand to put onto their prizes. But overall, <laughs> and the Hilly goes a really, really cool GX with his GX attack. I would definitely grab yourself one or two, but that's about it. I wouldn't grab like a playset by any means. <clears throat> Uh, Prime Ape is Bulk City. Nothing interesting there. We got Cubone for the Marowak. Uh, overall, it's whatever. It's a Cubone. It does have 70 HP, though, so that's something worth mentioning. So, this is probably the Cubone 2 play. I don't think any of the Cubones have 70 HP. We have Regirock. Regi, Regi, Regi Rock. Looking like a boss. Uh, 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 yeah. The Rock Peak Growl. Your Regiseal's attack do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Okay. I'd rather play Delmize, probably, <laughs> to be honest. This attack isn't affected by resistance for fighting fighting colors. Yeah, I think I'd rather play Delmize. Although this is heavy ball searchable, so it's something worth mentioning. 130 HP is pretty decent, but it is weak to grass, so it doesn't really matter. You've got Gastrodon here, 30 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is not confused. Uh, Earthquake does 10 damage to each of your opponent to each of your bench Pokemon for 120. It's not really worth. So as nice as the Gastrodon artwork is, not a fan. Moving on, Stuffle, and of course another Beware card. Why am I surprised? Fluffy, your opponent takes 30 less damage from attacks of your opponent's Pokemon, non-fire Pokemon. So, <laughs> of course, Volcanion is popular, so it doesn't really matter too much. Crosscut, if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, it's active 60 more damage. That's not bad. It's the first decent beware, right? Because you can attach a strong energy, strong DCE. Uh, if, you're, if you're fighting an evolution Pokemon, you're doing 120, 140, 170 with Choice Band. Uh, unfortunately, you can't hit that 170 against a Lele where it really matters, but eh, I think it's Bulk City. I still think it's Bulk City. Buswell GX, get yourself three or four of these right now. This is a new deck. I 100% believe this is going to be a new deck. Buswell GX has so much going for it. 190 HP. So, first of all, let's go over the first attack, right? Jet Punch. 30 damage attack, and this attack does 30 more damage to one of your opponent's bench for one. Those of you who've been playing the game for a long time know how powerful this is. This is essentially what the old Landorus did. For a strong energy, you can do 50 damage. With a Fighting Fury Ball attached, you're doing 60 damage. 60 damage means you knock out Ralts, Beldums, and other evolution Pokemon that have 60, 60 HP, uh, which is really, really, really big. You can get a lot of early game aggression with cards like Buswolf. When you have a Fighting Fury Ball, you have 230 HP, and you can chain this attack over and over and over again. It's very unlikely that your opponent will knock you out unless you're playing something like Garp and you have played a lot of items. So. Uh, you have cards like Acerola, Super Scoop Up. You have a lot of good stuff going into Buzzhole. So Buzzhole is really, really cool because you have the 190 HP, man. It's like Landorus, but better. Uh, two or three costs isn't the best because you can't search it with Heavy Ball. But it is still a basic GX, which means you can bridge it out a bunch of them. And then while you're busy attacking with Buzzwell GX, tanking hits for a little bit, you can set up Buzzwells in the back to use Knuckle Impact, which means you're doing 160 damage, 190 with Choice Band, 210 with one strong energy, 230 with two strong energies, 250 with three strong energies and a Choice Band. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Knuckle Impact. And then you have Absorption GX, which is another really, really good GX attack. 40 damage, and, and you do, uh, this attack does 4 damage for each of your remaining prize cards. So... Say that you've, already, you've taken four prizes, right? 40, you're only doing 160, so it's, you're better off doing knuckle impact. But if, you only, if you've only taken one prize, you're doing 200 without any boosting at all. So that's nice. If you, if you have all your prizes and you want a big knockout, say that you weren't able to get set up really well. You could play cards like Max Luxor, although I don't really see Max Luxor being useful. And you, try, you want to try to avoid playing too many items in a deck that's weak to Psychic. But Buswell GX is going to be really powerful. We have cards like Zoark in the format now that a lot of decks are trying to play. And they're really testing because Zoark is such a powerful card. But with Buswell GX, that is a pretty easy knockout. Think about it like that. Like, you have um, one strong... Say you have two strong energies. And you and that's it. You don't have another You don't have another energy. You just have your two strong energies. You're doing 40 extra damage. Which means your Jet Punch is doing 70. 70 with Choice Band. That's 100. You're doing 200 damage to a Zoark. If you put one damage counter on them from before... Boom. You also knock out Zoras without any without any addition. So Zora, there is no 70 HP Zora, so that's another thing worth mentioning. Je Buswell GX is a good card. Get yourself three or four of these if you ever want to play a Buswell deck. If you're not interested in playing a Buswell deck, it's not exactly the most splashable card ever. So I wouldn't bother I wouldn't bother buying it unless you want to get the deck. But this is a new deck. This is a buy. This is a buy or hold on to so the and hold on to for a good amount of time because it's probably gonna worth a good amount of money in the future. As opposed to, you know, obviously it's going to be worth a good amount of money uh, on the release date. Because it is probably one of the more hyped cards in the set. But uh, after, time goes by, after time goes by, it's going to lessen in price. And it's probably going to increase in price when you see it being played in tournaments. So uh, hold on to your Buswells if you want to. It would make good trade fodder if you don't want to play a Buswell deck. Or look into playing Buswell decks. You have a lot of different partners. You have cards like Garbodor, right? Garbodor can turn off abilities, which means that Guardi won't be as, as big of an issue. Neither will Metagross. 
you have the evolution options with Espeon. Uh, I don't really see yourself. I don't really see you playing Tapu Koko unless you want to fit in strong energies or I mean DCEs, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But you have cards like Po Town. Po Town can put more damage on the board if they evolve. <clears throat> you have a lot of options with Buswool. Buswool, yeah, and hopefully, hopefully I'll have a Buswool GX deck uh, that I can show you guys before release date. Just something you guys can like start toying around with because I do really, really like Buswool. I don't know if I made that clear yet. But this has been 35 minutes. I gotta keep going. Um, we got Houndor, Houndoom. Tons of uh, Burned. It's, I mean, Burning is cool. Once maybe if we get a cool... Maybe we get a cool burning stadium like we have with Burbank. That'd be interesting. I'm sorry about the mute there. I had to clear my throat. Uh, we have a, a Dino 70 HP. So let's we'll see if the Hydreigon is good. Uh, weed out. The Hydreigon artwork is pretty dope. I just like Hydreigon as a Pokemon. Once during your turn, you may choose, a, you choose three of your bench Pokemon, then discard your other bench Pokemon. Oh, so it's like you can parallel with yourself without the need for using parallel. Huh. That's really cool, actually. Especially if you're playing like a lot of Lele's, you just want to keep discarding your Lele's so they're no longer, they're no longer liabilities. That's pretty cool. Dark Destruction. 120 damage when we discard an energy from this Pokemon. If you do discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. I wish this thing had a little bit more HP. 160 HP is just a little bit too low to me. Uh, Cause that would be a really cool card, right? Being able to use Weed Out every turn uh, while you, while you at constantly attack with this doing two KOs, but it's a little bit too low of HP. So meh. Guzzlord GX, everyone's favorite meme Pokemon, 210 HP, dark type Pokemon, which is already a problem because of uh, Buswool. I mean, overall, the card's not good. I'm going to be honest. If you want to be a meme uh, you should probably buy four of these because you can make a pretty fun meme deck. Eat Sloppily, discard the top five cards of your decks. If any of those cards are energy cards, attach them to this Pokemon. Uh, you could play a card. You, your deck can literally consist of um, four Guzzlords, so you're forced, of, if, so you're forced to attach a Guzzlord. Um... Four fan clubs, four, um, four Bridgets, four Ultra Balls, and then the rest of energies, right? Like you can you can make it to where you play nothing but cards that will get you Guzzlords on the bench, and then while you're attaching to the active, you eat sloppily, and while you're attacking with that Guzzle, you're attaching to the bench, you eat sloppily, uh, assuming you can't already attack. You play a couple DCEs, of course. Um, you Glutton GX, which does a, so Tyrannical Dull Hole does do 180 damage. I guess if you want to be that guy, you can also play Choice Ban. You don't want to play too many cards in this deck if you're playing the meme deck, right? Because you are going to discard them with Eat Sloppily, but it might be worth playing. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. You want to try to get fully charged up after one Eat Sloppily, so you want to play a crap ton of energies. Uh, if you do want to play, be that guy. Of course, overall, in expand, in expand, you have Max Lecture Dark Patch, but you're never going to want to use Glutton GX, because Glutton GX is just too low of damage output. It's like way too low, but it does get you extra two prizes. So in theory, you could take four prizes in one turn with Glutton GX. I know there's cards like Whimsicott that can mean you could take double the prizes or something like that, but let's just talk realistically, right? Already talking about Guzzlord. I think Guzzlord's a bolt card. I think if you want to be that guy, you can build it. Uh, you would need to play a four, four line, a four line, I mean, just because you want to make it consistent. But overall, bulk it up, trade it away, do whatever you gotta do. Mawile's cool, Call for Family. It's the best Call for Family Pokemon we have right now. It's 180 HP, or it's 80 HP, not 180 HP, but it's a colorless attack, so you can splash into any deck. Call for Family lets you search for two basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench. Unlike Vulpix, which Vulpix has a free attack, but it puts them into your hand. If you Call for Family, you can evolve them the following turn, which is really nice. So there's benefits to playing Mawile and Vulpix. Either way, you're gonna have to attach an energy to Vulpix to retreat it, unless you're gonna play Guzma or Flowstone. So, mmm. Full picks has the benefit of attacking for free, but it goes into your hand. So and it's worth holding on to one or two of them just because the setup is pretty nice. So I would say don't bulk this up. Crunch does 30 damage, flip a coin if has discard energy. So if you're playing a deck with DCE and you want to have that last ditch effort to discard energy, there's that option. We've got Aggron. People are asking me how I feel about Aggron. 170 HP is not the best. I'm not going to lie. Its artwork is pretty cool though. Uh, it does 10 damage, Revenge Cannon for Metal co Double Colors. This tech does 10 more damage for each damage counter on all of your bench Pokemon. So you have both Double Colors energy and Counter energy in Aggron. So there's that benefit. You have eight cards that give you two energy attachments as opposed to just one, as opposed to just four. Um, Buster Swing is something you're not going to want to do. But Revenge Cannon is cool because you have Potan, right? So you just damage your own Aggrons on the bench, which is something you don't really want to do, but it's how you have to do it in order to get damage. So if you say you have like, three Larons on the bench, right? And you damage them all each with Potan, that's 30, 60, 90. 
So you're doing 100 damage with a Revenge Cannon. That's like a lot of damage on your board just for you to not win. <laughs> just for you to not get an Oko. Not a fan of Aggron. Bulk it up. Don't even try. Registeel. I know a lot of people are hyping up Registeel if they play Metal. Uh, the 30 damage attack, attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Unfortunately, the decks that you're playing Rainbow Energy in, you're very rarely playing uh, basic energy in it, in it. And if you do, it's not that many. So this is probably exclusively for metal Pokemon. You know what I mean? And we have Metagross, which is the only viable metal deck in the format right now. So maybe we'll get cool other metal Pokemon that you don't want to play meta that you don't want to play Metagross GX in. Uh, then this card's worth it getting. I would say get yourself three or four of these just for the meantime, just to hold on to your binder. But for the most part, it's not very good right now. Iron Hand, 90 damage, Red Rice is on your bench, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. I mean, I guess that's cool. You reek to fire, which is not great either. Here's the Escavalier that we were talking about earlier. Not a big fan of this card. Flip three coins, attack 30 damage for each head. So I guess at most you can do 90 damage, 120 with Choice Band. If you have Flip Teeny, like you can increase your odds, but it's overall not worth it. Being weak to fire is not great either. Iron Tackle, the attack is 30 damage for yourself, 130 damage. I mean, it is cool that you can evolve into it right away, but the attack the attack cost and the Pokemon, I'm sorry, I just keep trying to move it around. Uh, the attack cost and the Pokemon itself are just not worth. So moving on, we have Kartana GX. I'm going to try to rush through the rest of these. Kartana GX is a good card, but it's not a card that you need multiple copies of. I would say get yourself one or two of these, probably. It has Enhanced Hammer as an ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand into your bench during your training, we discard special energy from one of your Pokemon opponent's Pokemon. Now, I'm in the mindset that I'd rather play Enhanced Hammer. Uh, I know that Garbodor is good, but bench space is very, very, very valuable. And I don't want to put down Kartana and just use his ability. But it's still a really good ability, especially if you plan on attacking with it. Gale Blade is sending damage, and you may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached into your deck. So if you want to put a DCE back in the deck, and do 70 damage in the meantime and make something else active it's pretty decent the attack overall though not the best you're not going to be attacking you're not going to be using this attack in a metagross deck that's for sure because if you do you're losing three of your metal energies and putting them back into your deck which is something that you don't usually want to happen you'd rather just put the uh, energies in the discard pile so that you can use your ability the following turn so uh you know it is a one retreat cost which is pretty decent that's something worth mentioning it does resist psychic which is nice but you have blade gx which is a Arguably one of the best GX tech ever. You just take a prize card. <laughs> and a lot of in a lot of games that force you to play the seven prize game, taking a prize card just for one energy, which by the way, this is the true reason to get this card. Rainbow energy. Any deck that plays rainbow energy that just wants a really free GX attack, boom. The is gonna like this if they play if they play rainbow. Just because a lot of the time you're either gonna be using Hollow Hunt or nothing, right? Maybe Tapu Cure. Uh, you have a lot of, I mean, this just increases your GX attack options. Like, you can make a GX toolbox pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, taking a prize card for free is just ridiculously powerful. Because there's a lot of times your opponent will give you, like, basics that you don't want to knock out. And when you have Blade GX, you can knock them out and feel comfortable. Because later on, later in the game, you can just Blade GX to take another knockout through. Later, take, take another knockout too. Not a knockout, a prize. <laughs> Say that you're really stuck and you just want that one, and you feel like you have a chance of getting that one card off the prizes that will help you. Boom, you play GX. You get that one card. I mean, having a one in six chance to get a card that could really, really help you, especially if you know it's prize. Maybe you know that like three of your cards that you need are prize, so you have a 50% chance of getting out of your situation. Play GX, boom, take your prize, 50% chance of getting it. Boom, bam, let's move on. I like Cartana. Get yourself one or two of these. Definitely good trade fodder as well. Uh, we have a Wiggly Tough. Your opponent acts when not sleep, whatever. So, exam your opponent's dark energy. So, okay, moving on. Xerneas, lead, search your deck for supporter card. Meh. Brighthorn, can't use Brighthorn the next turn. Meh. Although the artwork is interesting. Let me take a look at this. Oh, never mind. This is really blurry. But it looks like the artwork's kind of cool. Alolan Executor GX, the dragon type Pokemon that people really like, uh, has the attack Tropical Head. Probably the most interesting GX out of, the, out of these GXs. It's 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, the obvious answer is, hey, it's a grass energy, play Venusaur and double your energy count, yay. Uh, I would rather play this with Vickable, to be honest, but like, I can see the argument for Venusaur. Uh, but regardless, it's still like you're playing a stage one with a stage two. Yikes, you know what I mean? Dragon Hammer, 120 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. <sighs> Four energy attack, really. You're weak to Fairy as well, which already makes you bad, so. <laughs> Being able to snipe the bench for 80 at a time. 100, like, it, by benching a lot is really, really cool. But overall, I don't think the card's very good. Uh, uh, tower, go around, GX, 180 damage. Move any number of energy from this from your Pokemon to your other Pokemon any way you like. So you can just move around your energy. 
I still don't think this card is very good. Moving on. Definitely bulk that up, sell it up, whatever you want to do. We have a new Kamo'u Wolf Cry. It's, first of all, that artwork, once again, intense. 160 damage. Bad. Let's see if they make Kamo good. 30 damage. Your opponent, if you have fewer Pokemon to play than your opponent, attack those 90 more damage. So you can do 120 damage for a DCE. That's not awful. Moving on. <clears throat> Clanging scale, 130 damage. During your opponent's next turn, your Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. For lightning fighting colors, not the best. Don't like the card. Bulk it up. Move on. I like Miltank, though. As long as your opponent is your active Pokemon, as long as it's your Pokemon is your active Pokemon, whether you attach whenever you... <laughs> English. Aura. I know this has been like almost an hour. Move. As long as your opponent, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, whenever you attach an energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon, heal 90 damage from this Pokemon. I like this card a lot, especially in cards like Guardi. Uh, of course, if you're not playing the Diancie build, I personally like the Diancie build of Guardi, but if you're not playing the Diancie build and you're looking for a way to heal your Pokemon from snipe damage that your opponent is going to try to do to you, you can Guzma up this Mill Tank, right? Attach a Float Stone to it, whatever you got to do. Start using your ability to attach energy to your different Guardies and then heal them up completely and then retreat attack with your guardy boom bam it's a nice way to just kind of clean up your field bench space is an issue i don't know how good this card is going to be but i would definitely grab yourself one or two of them because the ability is actually really, really nice cards like metagross appreciated as well so boom sit down splash 60 damage if you flip a coin if heads attack those 30 more damage so you have a chance to do 90 damage it's not that great but whatever altaria dragon melody flip a coin if head search your deck for a normal pokemon played onto your bench i think that's the thing i was saying colorless i don't know what n is that might be a dragon. <clears throat> this might be a dragon. I think this is a dragon. I think this is supposed to be a dragon, which is cool for Kamo, but overall, I mean, attachment to DC is not great, but it's overall still not great. You have Cotton Guard. You take 30 less damage. But moving on, bulk it up. Star Raptor is one of my favorite starter birds of all time. I love Star Raptor. I don't think this card's very good. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, switch this Pokemon order your revenge Pokemon. So you have a U-turn knockout kind of thing. Moving on, it's not good. Regigigas, Reggie, Regigigas. 180 HP, basic non-GX. That is what I'm talking about. Thank you. Let's see what this card's got going for it. That's a really good HP number for a non-GX. Like that is a GX HP number on a non-GX. Shout out to that. Seal of Antiqu uh, Antiqu Antiquity, Antiquity. Seal of Antiquity. This Pokemon can't attack unless Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, and Reggie Steel are on the bench. Already hate it. But if you play Ability Lock, you can attack anyways. Let's see what's got. Giant Stop, 160 damage, discard any stadium card in play. Five energy. <laughs> it's a yikes. It's a yikes. 100, 160 damage is really good. 190 with Choice Band. It's not bad at all. But five energy. Moving on. Bulk it up. <laughs> uh, we got Minchino. Amazing Plead. Choose two cards from your discard pile, then ask your opponent if you put them into your hand. If yes, put those cards into your hand. If no, attack those 80 damage opponents like the Pokemon. I would always take the damage, bro. What? Get rid of this card. Cinchino. Diggers be dope. Earthquake hit him below. I let my enemies know. 60 damage of a coin of heads prevent all effects of attack, including damage on this Pokemon. Hammer in, yada yada. Moving on. Type Null is really bad. <laughs> we have a new Type Null coming, from what I remember, which is better than this, but this one's not great. It is a hollow rare though, so if you want your hollow rare to be this, yikes. <laughs> During your next opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks uh, for a DCE. I guess that's interesting, right? 110 HP is not bad, I guess. Claw slash on something. I mean, once again, you put yourself at, out of range of uh, Gillis Spot if you do attack with Armor Press. But you guys still value probably one of my favorite cards, and n only because of its potential. You're going to see in the set that we have some item cards, tool cards, that let you change the typing of Sil Valley. Which is already really cool so there's a lot of potential there we got Sylvalia gx it has gyro unit your basic pokemon play have no retreat costs um i guess there's like ways you, you can play this i guess in text in some decks like maybe you can play it in lapras uh give yourself no retreat and a bunch of pokemon without having to be a low hp manaphy that's something worth mentioning uh although it is a stage two it's still relatively interesting i mean you can't get it with brooklet though so there's a lot of downsides to it yeah Turbo Driver, 120 damage, attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. I love this attack. Unfortunately, it's three energies. But 120 damage is a, it's almost the perfect number. If it's 130 damage, it would be the perfect number. 120 damage, though, almost the perfect number because if you attach a memory card that gives you a different typing, you knock out everything because you're doing 240 with weakness. But 250 Pokemon, you have to play Kikui in. It's not the greatest. You could play spread damage, I guess. Put them in range you can play top of coco i suppose but being able to attach an energy from your disco pile to one of your bench pokemon is really cool because if you were to play like let's just say you're playing straight so valley right you play 120 damage all right you attach an energy the following turn dce 120 attach an energy um you turbo drive right then you start 
setting up your bench Pokemon. You attend your, you start setting up your bench Silt Valleys, which means they're both DCE attachments away from being able to attack themselves. So the attack itself is self, the, the deck itself is self-sufficient, which is really nice. If you go first, you're even better because you're going to attach an energy. You're out of range of being knocked out by Lele because you have a lot of HP on your type null. Uh, the artwork is pretty dope as well. I like the artwork with Silt Valley. Um, <clears throat> You have Rebel GX with the damage, the attack is 50 damage for each of your opponent's best Pokemon. Once again, in a format that's full of Bridget's, in a format that's full of a, uh, what's it called, the uh, Zorak GX, that's a good GX attack. It is the same thing as Lycanroc GX's attack, which is fine. Like, it's still a really good GX attack. It, it forces your opponent to not play that many bench Pokemon, which is always good. It makes them, it forces them to slow down. It's a pretty much an instant KO attack. So I like it. Right now, I believe there's only two memories out. We know that we got an announcement for a fire and electric one, I believe, as well, which is really good. I like fire. Fire is really good. So you have a card for Metagross, you know, boom, attach it, to, attach it. So you have a Metagross counter. Electric is boom, attach it to, is there anything weak to electric? I don't think there's anything weak to electric. So maybe if there's a deck, maybe Gyarados becomes super, super popular. Who knows, right? Uh, you boom, attach electric, everything dies. Boom, moving on. Counter Catcher is a card that everyone's super hyped about. It has a secret rare. It's a cool card. It's Lysander as an item. You can, may, you can only play this card if you have more prizes remaining than your opponent. Just when your opponent's back with bench Pokemon switch with their active. So it's, it's an item, Lysander, although realistically, I don't think it's worth playing. Here's my reasoning, right? It's an item card, um, which means we're getting Lusamine in this set, which I'll talk about later, but there's no way to retrieve this counter catcher if you were to Sycamore it or anything like that. I guess it's cool in a trade deck where you're not really Sycamoring a lot. So if you have a deck that that relies on playing and holding onto your resources. That's interesting. But in most decks, it's not gonna be a good card. It's gonna be a dead card early game. It's gonna be a good card if you're losing. You don't wanna be losing in the game. You wanna have you wanna have aggression. You wanna be, I guess, you wanna be accelerating towards winning. You don't want to be in the back ever. So countercatcher is a card for for it's a card for decks that are gonna be put are gonna be put behind. I don't like it. Although I do love it. I love this card in uh, decks that can knock out their own Pokemon, i.e. Electro. So Electric decks are going to love this card. They don't even have to play Guzma anymore, although I'd recommend playing Guzma just, you know, uh, just because. But Counter Catcher is a good card in decks like that where you're going to be putting yourself behind on purpose just to get yourself ahead the following turn. So I think Counter Catcher is cool. I would definitely get yourself a playset, but I wouldn't use it in a deck quite yet. We'll see how the meta evolves, but because of you know the fact that you have to be put behind i don't like it dash pouch uh if this if this if the pokemon this card is attached to let me try that again the pokemon this card is attached discards energy for its retreat cost put the energy into your hand instead of the discard pile that's kind of cool in guardy but overall i don't think it's a good tool i don't think it's worth playing devoured field is cool for dragons and dark type pokemon yeah i knew i knew it was dark uh because they do 10 more damage to active pokemon so that's kind of cool it's better than the other stadium, the Reverse Valley, because the Reverse Valley means that your metal Pokemon, the opponent, your opponent's metal Pokemon take 10 less damage, which essentially means you're doing nothing in the Metagross matchup. We have Fighting Memory here. Fighting Memory is actually super nice because Zorak's popular. So I like I like this. I like being able to hit Fighting Weak Pokemon for super effective. This is actually a way of Oakoing Zorak's. So Guzma Zorak's, I like it. I like Fighting Memory. We have another Memory card. We have Psychic Memory. Psychic Memory is really cool for knocking out Espeon. Espeon's the only one I can think of that's really relevant. <clears throat> Mainly because Espeon can do a lot of damage to you. If you have four, if you have all your energies attached, they're doing 150 damage to you, 180 with choice ban. So, eh, you know what I mean? I think it's cool. I think it's worth having this. I think this is the kind of deck you play Skyland. So there's your two memory cards. We have Gladion. Gladion's a really cool card and expanded. I would definitely give yourself one of these. Look at your face down prizes and put one of them into your hand. Then shuffle this Gladion into your remaining prize cards and put them back face down. I think it's really cool and expanded just because you have VS Seeker. I think it's really cool because you have Battle Compressor. Uh, I think it's probably worth playing in a couple of decks, but only in expanded. In standard, it's bad. I think it's I think it's not worth playing in standard <laughs> just because it's your supporter for the turn. Most of the time, you have multiple cards in your deck. I guess maybe if you're playing cards like Decidueye where you really need these E's and stuff like that, it could be worth playing. But that's a lot of you. You're gonna have a lot of trouble finding deck space for cards like this in standard because standard you have to play a lot of different cards to keep you moving to keep you accelerating to keep you t uh, being aggressive and stuff like that there's very few decks in standard that work that just kind of sit down Decidueye is always an example i fall back on just because i've been playing Decidueye a lot lately and 
I mean, Decidueye is cool and all, but you are attacking with Decidueye. You're using Ninetales, you're using Zoroark, you're attacking with Decidueye. You're not looking for a lot of cards, especially when you play Zoroark, you have Mallow that gives you whatever you need, you know what I mean? You don't have a lot of bench space to play Lele for Gladion. <laughs> so, I think this card is worth an Expanded a lot, definitely get yourself one for Expanded. Uh, but I don't think it's worth playing too many in standard. Lusamine, though, is definitely a card I would get yourself one or two of for standard. Standard really, really, really wants this. It's also good in expanded because you can get your stadiums back into your hand, although most of the time people play puzzles in expanded because they can because they can afford it. But two in any combination of supporters and stadium cards from discard pile to your hand. I love this card. There's a lot of there's there is a lot of times you are going to want to just kind of be set up for the following turn. This gives you your your fifth and sixth N, fifth or sixth Sycamore, fifth or sixth Guzmas. Uh, it lets you just reuse supporters throughout the game, and when you're in when you're in such a when you're winning the game, when you are, I guess, quote unquote, winning the game. I don't like saying winning in Pokemon because anything could happen that would make you lose. But um, when you're ahead in the game and you have time to sit down and just kind of like attack and pass, you can play Lusamine to get your supporters back into your hand. Even if your opponent ends you away, you have those supporters back in the deck. It's really good in cards like in, in trade decks that play Zoark as their accelerating engine. There's a lot of good things about Lusamine. I would definitely want to get myself at least one of these full arts because the full arts are beautiful. One. And I really want to play it in Ninetales. I feel like it's going to be really good in Ninetales, so I'm going to try it out in Ninetales. <clears throat> Peeping red card. If your opponent reveals their hand, you may you may have your opponent count the cards in their hand, shuffle those cards into their deck, and draw that many cards. So you can essentially force them to shuffle draw while looking at your opponent's hand. Because you don't actually have to, they don't actually have to shuffle draw. You, you They have to reveal their hand, but they don't actually have to shuffle draw. So I like that about Peeping red card. I think it's, mm, I don't know how I feel about it being better than Captivating Pokepuff because you can force them to play down Lele's. I think it's really cool if you can combine the two, right? You have Peeping Red card to look at their hand. Uh, you can force them to Shuffle Draw or you can not, and then you can play Pokepuff to make them play down Lele's and stuff like that. So there's that cool stuff. There's that coolness about it. Special conditions are not removed from po when, when Pokemon evolve. So if you really rely on special conditions, once again, Guzma is still a thing. I don't think that card is very good. Counter energy is interesting. I don't know how I feel about it yet. We'll have to see what decks come out of it. But I'm still, in, I'm still, you still need four of them just because it's special energy. You might as well get four of them. But counter energy is cool. This card provides one colorless energy. But if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, which means if you're losing the game, once again, if this card is attached to a Pokemon that isn't a Pokemon GX or EX, this card provides every type of energy, but only provides two energy at a time. So uh, on non on non two prize attackers, it can be a double rainbow energy if you're losing the game. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of restrictions to the card. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not very simple, which means that I don't think the card's great. But it's definitely worth hanging on to. And expanded is really cool for Trevenant. Um, Trevenant is really <laughs> Trevenant gets really good, really good with counter energy. There's a lot of cards in expanded that I really like it. So I would hold on to these but for the time being. So whatever. We got all these beautiful full arts. And Haligo is actually really cool looking. I love the way it looks. I don't know. I like I like the effects on it. But uh, let's see if there's anything else worth talking about. I love. Sylph Valley's full art, man. I can't wait to see a type of rare. We got Lusamine and Gladion. They both look sick. Let's, let's, let's be real. Lusamine is gorgeous. Lusamine is gorgeous. We do have Olivia full art in our in our English set now, unlike Japan. Well, there's your Olivia full art. I want to see hyper rare uh, Sylph Valley. Where are you at? Where are you? I want to see you. Oh, look at it. I definitely want three of these. I want to play Sylph Valley as my main deck as well. I have like three main decks I want to play. As you can see, we have Secret Rare Counter Catcher. We have... And Wishful Baton, everyone's favorite card. <laughs> we have Special Energy, Secret Area Energy of Warp Energy, and Counter Energy, and Water Energy. So the theory of us re, uh, constantly getting the other energies is kind of dead. You th we thought that we would get like Metal and Psychic again. And throughout the, throughout the series, uh, throughout Sun and Moon, we would constantly get Secret Energies in our sets. But it doesn't look like that's going to be a thing. Maybe it'll start again in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I guess we'll find out. But we do have water energy. If anybody gets water energies and wants to trade with me, I need to get me eight of these so I can have maximum rarity nine tails. Hook me up. Email me at ab.orbomb at gmail.com. <laughs> Let me know. Follow my Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Like, I want, I need eight of these. And I'm not planning on buying this. So I'm planning on getting signal, singles. So chances of me of getting these cards are pretty bad. So. Regardless, that's going to be the set, guys. This video became an hour long. It didn't really need to be an hour long, and I do apologize. I just like talking a lot. I like explaining how I feel about a lot of cards. So it's more of a set analysis. Buy your bulk. You guys know how it is. Um, yeah. Anyways, drop a like if you haven't already. Subscribe. Share all the good jazz. Sorry I took up so much of your time. Uh, if you guys don't know for the future, there is a way to speed up the video. 
you do the little, little, little corkscrew thingy, little, little thingy, you know what I mean? You hit 0.125, you save yourself a couple minutes. <laughs> That's what I do on YouTube. That's from the thing you guys know. But drop a like if you haven't already subscribed to all the good guys, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.